All right, we're back on the desk of the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Happy to be joined by NFL Draft prospect Sam Hartman, of course, from Notre Dame. And last week, just at the Senior Bowl, man, down on the yes, field sir. watching you out there throwing alongside Michael Penix and Bo Nix in this draft. What was that experience like for you? It was unreal. Um, you know, the, the entire organization at the reseason, Jim Nagy, just did an incredible job of just putting so many talented people around each yeah. other and I think the flow of the game and the flow of the entire event was so just smooth I, I don't know how he does it I'm sure he's stressed out I'm sure uh, he, he had a great <laughs> great vacation yeah. after and um, it, it was just an honor to be there I think um, playing on that team being around those guys training with Mike and then obviously knowing Bo through the years and just getting to see how they operate and how they work and then um, all around the ball you just get some some unbelievable skill position players and then I think the cool thing was playing with the other Notre Dame guys seeing some gold lids out there was a lot of fun I want to ask you something here Sam and take a good good I'm gonna go with this wide shot right here thank you very much Brace yourself. look at this I just want to look at you look at me and then here's Connor he's a good looking guy and then here's freaking Sam Hartman who's like a model like what producer put my dumb ugly ass against next to these two guys why do I have to do like could it's outrage like I have I, I have straight guys that tell me how hot they think you are it's unbelievable Sam so I'm just I'm very bitter at my producers f for making this a shot um, but I'm gonna ask you a real question here going <laughs> well, we got there yeah it, I, eventually I just wanted to complain about the fact that like so both of you are, even I'm sitting here like wow you're good looking I appreciate um, that. here's what I want to ask you Sam uh, last year you thought about going into the pros but ultimately you decided to transfer to Notre Dame what went into that decision to go to the Irish instead of coming to the pros and how do you feel about that experience um I think the big thing was is uh, what can I am I ready to do the transition am I ready and, and I think wake was incredible and I never want and all these interviews and all these different things is like wake forest for five years is my home it still is and I have friends I one of my best friends from there is a tight end for the Cardinals getting married next week like I'm it's true and true black and gold is always been, it will always be home and coach Claus and what they did for me and I think um, the idea was is okay the offense I played in I, I can throw I can do the I can make the throws but it was just in a unique style and to get under center to go like the senior bowl and, and to think if I was to go to the senior bowl after last if, after the wake year I would have struggled because I wouldn't have been able to get under center take the drops all, get into a huddle command a huddle Notre Dame was that for me that was the experience that was the whole process of this thing was hey can I go to Notre Dame and and get into a huddle, play with some guys, and do some things that in the NFL you have to be able to do on a routine basis. And so um, I enjoyed the, every second of it. It was hard. It was it was a big jump. It was a big difference, um, fan base wise. You know, expectations, criticisms, but um, all the same thing you're going to be doing as as you go into the NFL. One thing I always hear when I talk to scouts when they're evaluating quarterbacks is, have they faced adversity in college? Some of these guys go and play for two years. They don't know what that's like. With you. That's one of your competitive advantages, whether it's coming back from health reasons, whether it's going to transfer and having success success at a new program. What has that been like at the college level for you, dealing with adversity and coming back and rising above it? Yeah, I think that's kind of the three pillars that I kind of, you know, when you go through this process, I feel like you have to have just things that you rely on. And I think um, the experience, the resilience, and the self-awareness, I think you learn all those things through six years. And, you know, some people say it's a knock on all these quarterbacks for being old. I, I don't understand it because it's – it's not like we're getting hit. It's not like we're beaten up. We're not a running back that's played six years of college and just taken beatings. We're quarterbacks that have seen every defense you can think of, been in every situation you can possibly play in, played in all the big games. And um, I think, like you said, the resilience factor for me is just I wouldn't want it any other way. I don't think I'd enjoy and experience these moments and being here with you guys, being at, in Vegas, doing all these things as much. And I, and I think it's also to, to kind of get to why I'm here in this situation is, is the cool thing about going to Notre Dame was the charity I got to work with. And, and the Ronald McDonald House is, is this unbelievable organization that homes and houses people that are in need through medical crisis. And I've been in medical situations that I've recovered from and, and I not needed any of the stuff that some people need to, to get by. And I think the, the cool thing was during the season, you're rolling through it and you're in it and you're like, man, this is tough. This is hard. And then you go on a Friday before a game and go see these families and what they're going through and, and the support that they're receiving and, and the help with DirecTV business is, is so crucial. And, and they're doing something really cool here is and this weekend. They're hosting families from this area, from Vegas, um, to kind of, to help people. And, um, you know, I'll forever be indebted to Notre Dame, but I think one of the coolest things was, was 
getting to work with this organization and something I'm going to, when I go back for my pro day, that's going to be one of the first stops. And if people want to learn more, where can they go to find out They can more? go to the RonaldMcDonaldHouse.com and using like the DirecTV stuff and going through there and you can donate, you can volunteer. I volunteer and it's the coolest thing ever. And one of the, the cool things is, is you get to go from room to room and, don't, and, and help give little kids, families, um, you know, just different items or different food necessities that they don't have. And, and the crazy thing was I would go in early spring when I first got there and it would be the same family in the same place. And you're like, you're thinking you're having a bad day. You've been, right. They've been out of, out of place and, and is in this uh, hospital for almost a year. That's a great cause. Yeah, unbelievable cause. Uh, thank you so much for all your uh, work in that, that regard as well. Sam, we're a fantasy football show, so I'm just curious. Have you ever played it? Do your friends play it? Does it? Uh, it will. When you get into the pros, it will come up. I'm just curious oh. what your experience with it so far is. Yeah, growing up, it was something that, like, you know, I knew my dad was happy or sad based on how his fantasy <laughs> team went a little bit. I think that there's, uh, there was definitely some, you know, he would try and get insight from me as I was, as I kind of started learning more yep. football growing up. And I, I don't know if he plays much anymore, but um, obviously, fantasy football is a huge part of this thing. And um, you know, there's always kind of the different. Uh, whatever you want to call like hey best fantasy teams and i know guys like had leagues in our in our locker room legally yeah, right now of course not, yeah not yeah calling yeah. anybody out and um no it's a it's an it's a cool part of the game i think and it's fun when you see like guys like in the nfl interact with their owners or the people who tell them like hey you know you cost me i'm like sorry <laughs> you know whatever so Sam, you played with a lot of great offensive linemen, but I have to ask you about Joe All Shoot. because they just don't make him like this guy. I mean, six foot eight, six foot nine, skyscraper left tackle, great run blocker. What was it like when you get to Notre Dame and you look in the huddle and you go, this is my left tackle, a guy that's going to be a top 10 pick? I would say it's, it was very daunting at first because you're like, this guy's going to be all world. This guy's going to be, you know, you know, a little too cool for school. He's going first round. <laughs> yeah, completely star. opposite. And he was the one who took me in probably the most. And it, and it made it so, such an easy transition. And, and like you said, the, the whole part was going into that huddle. How am I going to own the huddle? How am I going to um, go in? And Joe helped me so much. And, I, and I'd say his, his off the field intangibles are just incredible. He's an engineer major with like a 3.8 at Notre Dame, class load, everything he did. And then he was just a great guy. And I think that him being a captain as a, in his third year and, and him just leading that O-line and setting the standard and really the standard for the rest of Notre Dame football history as an O lineman of what it's like to be um, a part of that program it is just I'm so excited for him. I, I, I Joe Alt's like anytime I get asked, he's the player. He's the best player I've ever played with. The player I'll take anywhere wow. I go. Um, and and it's not even just because of all the things that you see on the field. It's off the field too. So, go ahead. It's awesome to hear. Last question for me here, Sam, is just we're in Vegas. Super Bowl Sunday's around the corner. Uh, two great quarterback storylines, obviously with Mahomes you know, already a legend, and Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, two years later, he's starting a Super Bowl. Unbelievable story for him as well. Just, I'm curious through your eyes, how do you think this game plays out? Who do you think wins? Yeah, I think it's a great, I think it's, for me, it's awesome because I, I, I at this point, I just love watching quarterbacks play. I love watching great ones play, and I think you're looking at, like you said, two of the best, and um, I think you look at Patrick Mahomes, and, and I think for me, I always look at it from the draft perspective of, I know one of my third things was self-awareness, right? Where does that come from? The self-awareness to know that I'm not walking around here 6'5", 230, and, and the greatest quarterback to come out of college football ever. Like I, I know my, my abilities and what I bring to the table and, and those different things. And um, you look at a guy like both Patrick Mahomes and then you look at Brock Purdy. But Patrick Mahomes, if you redraft his draft class, where is he going? First, First overall. overall. Always. You, you watch Brock Purdy, he's going to move up as well. And I think it's it's a healthy reminder to, to kind of run your own race. And, and you're going to get to the point, and both of them didn't start right away and, and sat and, and learned. And, and I think they're just taking – I think Patrick Mahomes is obviously in a whole other category. I don't want to put him in sure. some – you know, he's going to be one of the greatest ever to do it. But Brock Purdy, um, of just taking advantage of the opportunity he got and, and to call him a game manager and criticize it makes no sense. Yeah, like, go, ma you. go game manage to a Super Bowl. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah sure. Good luck for that. Yeah, Good exactly. Living. From Wake Forest, Notre Dame, now onto the NFL. We can't wait to see where you land. Sam Hartman, thanks for joining us. Appreciate man. you guys having me on. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully. Respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own, 
Fantasy Football Happy Hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.